thank you very much for coming. It's nice to be here. And thanks for the people who've invited me so that I can uh, put this, set the scene on um, AAC as the accreditation, explain a few things to you. Um, just to give you a bit, bit of background, we, um, the office in Singapore has been opened as the, region, the, the first and only regional office of AACSB. AACSB has been around for almost 100 years and been, of course, in the United States. And until about probably 15 years ago or so, uh, did only accredit uh, North American institutions. And then there was a decision to go international, um, and uh, predominantly the movement was, of course, with European schools being closer, and uh, and they're also in a sort of um, a more of a accreditation mindset because, of course, EFND is in Europe, and Equis is uh, uh, another um, very major accrediting body. Uh, based in Europe, and then there's AMBA, which is a UK-based uh, accreditation of MBA programs. And probably the three major uh, accrediting bodies are AACSB, um, EFMD with Equus, and then uh, AMBA, which just accredits MBA. So that's the sort of scene. Um, but there was a decision that um, certainly the Asian schools were growing in their interest in accreditation. Um, the ability to manage the growth in Asia uh, with the current staff in the uh, world headquarters in Tampa was certainly becoming challenging. Therefore, uh, the executive staff went to the board of directors and said, should we open an office in Asia, and that was how the office came to be. Uh, we opened in June. Um, I was hired to open that office. Um, my background, and I'm, I'm giving you this to, so you get a sense of where I'm coming from. My background is uh, I, w I left a dean position in University of Massachusetts Dartmouth to do this, um, and previous to that had worked as a volunteer for AACSB for quite a number of years, probably about 15 years. Uh, that word volunteer may sound a little odd to you, but um, AACSB accreditation, dis decisions for accreditation are made by your peers. The staff, myself, uh, the accreditation staff, and the education staff in the world headquarters are, do not make decisions about accreditation. All the decisions are made by uh, peer schools, the deans in peer schools, and uh, the work is done by committees. Um, so that puts the scene, the set of the scene on that. So, um, now I have a long presentation, a longish presentation, so I'm going to work fairly quickly because we've got a lot of panel members here. But I can always come back to it, depending on the kind of questions you might have. Um, there's also a handout I gave, uh, AACSB folder. There were 35 folders, so I hope there's enough to go around. If there aren't, you can let me know, and um, we might be able to do some shuffling around if there's a lots of people from, me, from one school got several copies. Okay, so... Um, what I'm going to do is, is um, go through a little bit of the process. Um, I, in, in 15 minutes or so, I can only briefly go through, through some of these things. Um, standards overview, of course, I cannot. We do a two-day seminar on that. I will mention the three groups of standards and so on. And um, then a bit more of the process and what's involved and give you an opportunity to, well, we'll ask questions at the very end. Okay. Um, just, I think this is an interesting uh, data, set of data. Just to put um, it in perspective around the world, um, the... The column on this side is really interesting. This shows we've 
12,500 business schools in the world. By far, the vast majority are in Asia, which is, of course, why we have the office here. Um, the, of course, the, if you look at accreditation members, the membership, this is actually slightly, they're all slightly out of date because it changes every month. But if you look at this number, uh, North America is uh, about 700, approximately close to 50%. So the rest of the world makes up the other 50%, which is, I think, an interesting uh, change. People would tend to think this is a very American um, organization, but its face is definitely changing. Um, accredited schools, again, naturally, the majority in Northern America, um, because uh, of the of this number, because again, it's been in America since the 1920s. Um, however, this is growing, and also what's interesting is that Asia is quite quickly catching up to Europe. So, um, so we're we're certainly having an impact here in Asia. In the process. You look at the total in process, where's my little dot here? The total in process is approximately 200. And in Asia, Asia makes up 25%, approximately 25% of the schools in process. So we are seeing a vast amount of interest from this area. And of course, that's why you're here, because you want to learn a little bit more about it. So, um, just that sets the scene. Okay, so let's, this is the brief process. Establish membership. You have to be a member. Um, in your packet in front of you, um, there's a little bit about membership benefits, and there's also a membership application process. Basically, the criteria to be a member is that you are an, an education body uh, in, uh, that has a legal authority to uh, exist in a country, so you are uh, legally an educational institution. You demonstrate that quite often by showing, possibly showing your name on a website. You go to your Ministry of Education and usually your name will be listed there as an, a legitimate educational institution. 